Hello and welcome to our search for the ultimate mechanical keyboard. So Ken has spent many, many hours and many, many dollars buying, customizing, and tweaking to his heart's content a wide range of keyboards in our search for what could be the very best keyboard that you can buy. Now, the thing is, when it comes to a mechanical keyboard, you can get way into the weeds, right? I mean, there are people who are incredibly hardcore. You can completely custom build keyboards like our friend Ted Types does. But the thing I wanna know is which of these keyboards is closest to my own personal preference. And before we get to that, of course, I have to give a big shout out to the sponsor of today's video, which is... Omaze. Which is... Omaze. Okay, you know, it doesn't work when I like, I try to lean in too far to the camera. Thank you very much to Omaze for sponsoring this video. Definitely be sure to stay tuned to the end of the video to find out how you can not only help support a wonderful charity, but also potentially win yourself some sweet new gaming gear. So to start out with, let's take a look at the Razer Huntsman Mini, which has the same very clicky switch that I'm used to and I actually use in my Razer Huntsman Elite at home. So I have always sort of gravitated toward the much more clicky style. Now, there are actually advantages and disadvantages to the various different ones beyond just your own personal preference. So for me, I like this, but it also is generally speaking a little bit better for typing, right? So you know as you're typing away your essay, your report on why Ken spent all the company money, then this gives you a little bit more of that sort of satisfying click. Now on the opposite end of the spectrum, you have a linear keyboard. This is much quieter, as you can hear, but essentially, instead of having that sort of very distinctive click, so you press it down and then you get the click, this is completely, as the name implies, linear from top to bottom. Now, this is generally speaking better as a gaming keyboard. Now, what you get here is something which doesn't have that like, it doesn't have that same kind of feel, especially it doesn't have that same kind of sound. We have to think about it. If you're going to be gaming and you're going to be using a handful of keys for hours at a time, there are a couple of things you want. First of all, you want it to be a very quick sort of key. In fact, actually, if you look at the Huntsman, the tournament edition, this is a very light linear switch for the exact same reason, right? Of It's sort of very quick to kind of pop up. It's also very quick to press down and it's not going to be super heavy so your fingers are tired after your hours and hours of Fortnite. I wouldn't know. I don't do that, but I'm sure people play lots of, <clears throat> uh, anyway, uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, yeah, so linear, very different style of key. Now, if you want to blend the two, then you get what is known as a tactile switch. So essentially, it has a lot of the same advantages of a linear switch, but as you can hear, you have a little bit more of an actual click. So this pretty much has no click, right? It just goes all the way down and it's sort of, to the feel, it just is like straight. Yeah, there's a little bit of a bump when you press it. You yeah. can actually more feel it than yeah, hear right. it. See, like, right like this, right? So click, click, click. You see how it goes down a little bit and then it drops? Same thing with this guy, right? But you have a much more pronounced click and of course you get a lot more yeah. of that sound. Basically, it's all about confirmation. Do you yeah. want to have the audible and physical confirmation or do you just want the physical confirmation or no confirmation at all? And it really just depends. So you can spend as much money as you want <laughs> customizing these keyboards, but you actually don't have to spend a crazy amount. So probably the cheapest one that I have here is this SK64 board. So this has um, hot swappable switches for uh, optical mechanical switches, so kind of like the Razer. This board with the keycaps and the switches themselves costs about $90 on ship. Not bad. Not too bad at all. I love the NES style color scheme going on here. It's a cool color scheme, right? It looks and very again, cool. it came with all of this stuff already. The only thing that I had to buy apart from that was um, I ended up taking the liberty of getting some kit stuff to help uh, with the process of, you know, taking keys out, right? So as I pop that guy off, don't, don't worry about it. With a little bit of labor, you can actually make your keys feel and sound better than they did before. If I actually take this apart, you guys so, will yeah, see so that there are these extra, extra little stems here. Those are the stabilizers. Those are for the longer keys that kind of need a little bit of stability because the switch just won't cut it on its own. On the other end of it, so this is a mash drop control. We've looked at a lot of these on the channel. The mash drop control is one of the ones that you see around on the internet a lot. Um, the biggest thing is that this keyboard on its own costs around, I think 200 if not slightly more than 200, but you can hot swap the switches off these things to whatever you want. Again, these Gateron MX switches you can put in here. I think this is a lot of money though for what you can get. I actually found that for $120, this GMMK compact 
board was actually a really good balance of price and quality. So why don't you, why don't you hold this? Why don't you hold okay. this here? I'll, I'll, uh, I'll hold the camera for you. So this keyboard's interesting because what you've done is you've given it those linear switches, but then you've put these very interesting keycaps on, which are sort of very much domed on all sides. Now that's great if you want to pay, have to pay your specs, you don't want your finger to fly off of it, but on the flip side, it means it's a little bit harder to move from key to key. Also, the, the keycaps themselves are about 90 bucks. These are from Drop. So in this Amp Pro 2, we have putting keycaps in this really nice like cyan mm -hmm. and pink color. Yeah. These were only about $15 on Amazon. So you can go either really crazy at $80, you can get even more for like yeah. a couple, you can get them for like 200 bucks if you really want to, or you can get something really cheap. But of course, the feel is different. These definitely feel a little more substantial, a little thicker. These are obviously a little cheaper plastic, a little a little lighter as well. There's a lot of things to chase, Austin yeah. Evans. Keyboards are uh, hell. Also, this cable, $50. So. I think at this point, we have a good sense for the various different keyboards we have, the different switches, the different caps, the different sort of chassis. So now, what do we do now? You just wanna try them in practice? Well, let's put it this way. The first step is to get a computer in here. We should probably uh, get that set up. Hey, there we go, there we go. Okay. So we got a computer. And I think what you should do is, we'll start with the typing test, literally, Literally, let's see which one you like to type on okay. the most. Okay. And then we'll go into gaming and we'll see which one you like gaming the most. And, and then, then we can kind of just gather opinions and then we'll see which one walks away your favorite. Okay, I like that, but you didn't say it dramatic enough. Because um, don't forget, we need to keep people watching the video. Next up, we're about to do the most extreme keyboard test possible. I'm about to try all of these keyboards in a wide variety of challenging conditions. I'm about to find out which is the ultimate mechanical keyboard. See, if you say something like that, people are a little bit more interested, because otherwise it kind of sounds boring, because they're just playing with You like, did that keyboards. for the four people that are left. Good job. Okay. They probably, they can't figure out how to find the escape key on their custom keyboard, so they're stuck on the video. It's the, it's the big red one. Yeah, well. That sounded pretty good, actually. I'm proud of my work. So to start out with, let's try the Huntsman, which I am a little bit more comfortable with, so. Seventy-four words per minute, so that's about right. I can be a little bit faster, but okay, that's I think a pretty good baseline. So obviously, this is something I'm really comfortable with. Let's try one of the linear switches now. Okay, seventy-eight. So almost exactly the same. Although interestingly, I was actually a little bit more accurate. Okay, let's try one of the tactiles now. Oh, okay, slightly messed up. A little bit faster, wait, is that really true? 77? Have I gotten exactly the same on all three keyboards? Does that sound right to you? I mean, just says that you're consistent. 83, so it's a little bit faster on that one. Now, one thing I definitely noticed is uh, pinging. That's, that's the phrase, right? So if you actually hit that space bar a little loud, can you hear that? You, you get that twang, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So what you can do is essentially dampen the body yeah. on some of these keyboards. You just straight up open up the whole entire thing, put a little bit of foam between the body and the board. Yeah. Um, this one, my favorite one that I spent hours and hours <laughs> leaving over, this one, the GM&K, actually came pre-dampened already. It, it came with the foam. Sixty-four. Yeah, I was significantly slower with that one. You know, in theory, I could probably be pretty fast with this one. But the weight and especially the keycaps on that one, I it would take a lot of getting used to. I'm not, no offense, I'm not a huge fan of this one particularly. Seventy-three. Okay. Now, why don't we try one of the uh, controls? Well, yeah. Which control should I use? You, think? This, so this, is this you can the... try both of them, but they're very, very different from each other. Yeah, uh, I'm making a lot of mistakes, but it does sound nice. Uh, it's crazy light. I think the rating is like 35 grams. Okay, 69. Nice. Nice. Uh, but my accuracy was among the worst. This is it. Yeah, so these are a little bit of a heavier tactile switch. 93 and 100% accuracy. That is so much better than the other ones. So if I'm gonna do all of these 
I think I need to really narrow it down to a couple. So it is a new day. I have come in with fresh eyes and we have an actual gaming PC unlike yesterday. <clears throat> so now let's play some CSGO and see which keyboard I really like. So first impressions, I definitely like the Razer, right? It feels good. It feels sort of very responsive. And this is what I'm used to, right? This is the way I always game. You know, it's funny, when it comes to gaming, I always feel like the mouse makes more of a difference than the actual keyboard. Right, would you agree? Not really. Really? I feel like for something like CSGO, I care more about the, the sort of tuning my mouse than anything else. You're not really, you're not really playing like a CSGO player though. No, because I suck. Of course, we're, we already have established this. I'm not a good gamer. So this, if I remember correctly, is our tactile, right? Yes. Immediately, I like the sort of the lighter feel of this one. So something I'm noticing with this one, it feels a little bit more, sort of the lack of clickiness actually means that I feel like I can get the key down a little bit quicker. It does seem like it's kind of an interesting blend. I really want to go back to the drop though, because I feel like this was my favorite when it came to typing. And my thought is, it's probably gonna be better for gaming too. I, oh, I love that feel. So I think something that is really jumping out to me about the drop is it feels like, for my personal taste, I like the way that it sounds. And especially when it comes to actually gaming, it feels good, right? Like, I don't know how to, ooh, I don't know how to best describe it, but like, the, I guess the responsiveness of the keys. I'm a little bit torn between the Razer and the Drop right now. For typing, I actually really like the Drop. For gaming, I do like the tactile feel. It does feel like it's a nice sort of middle ground. This is one of the most expensive keyboards here. Obviously you have the full rainbow puke if you want it, but especially if you get into something like maybe some custom keycaps on this to kind of give it a little bit more style, this might be the move. Like, I love my Razer, right? I love the clicky clackiness, but I think it actually may be time for me to move on a little bit and go to something which is just a little bit more um, <clears throat> sophisticated for your finest mechanical keyboard needs. The goal is to get you to try better things so much to the point I where certain things don't feel as good anymore. Are you trying to tell me the difference right now is using my Razer, like this is like a pre-built gaming PC, whereas this is like building my own? Like, is that the difference? I think the difference is like, this is Alienware. Okay. This is iBuyPower. Okay. And then this is like your budget $800 PC that you built on your own. So with all of this, I'm curious, what happens when I go to the extreme end of mechanical? What happens if we actually build a full custom one? Well, I can find someone to help you with that. It'll cost you about a, a couple hundred dollars or a thousand dollars. Oh, okay. That sounds like much more like it. Well, luckily, we have the sponsor of today's video to help out, Omaze. See what I did there? See, I made it, you made a joke about money and I was like, oh, well, this video is sponsored. So hopefully they'll sponsor our video on uh, building a computer keyboard. <clears throat> They justified me purchasing all of these. Omaze is partnered with Gamers Outreach, a charity which is dedicated to providing children in hospitals with access to gamer gear as well as entertainment, and you can help support as well as potentially win yourself a $20,000 Ultimate Gaming PC, as well as some sweet Razer gear including a mouse, keyboard, as well as headset. When you donate, you are entered for a chance to win, and you can do that by going to omaze.com slash austinevans and entering the code austinevans50 for 50 additional entries. If you're not familiar with Omaze, they have a wide range of of other things available, including giving away stuff like cars and one-of-a-kind experiences. But if you want your chance to win a $20,000 Ultimate Gaming PC, and don't forget that also includes taxes and shipping included, head over to omaze.com slash austinevans and use the code austinevans50 for those 50 additional entries. Thank you very much to Omaze for sponsoring this video, and thank you very much to Omaze for giving you guys a sweet opportunity. What are you waiting for? Head over there, and until next time, I will be, um, playing with keyboards and not a $20,000 Ultimate Gaming PC. Look, that's a, that's a future video, okay? That's, that's not, that's, that's a different thing.